Hi folks and welcome back to part two in my Making a Meadow series. Since I last recorded, we've had one of the driest summers in hundreds and hundreds of years and perhaps unsurprisingly things didn't go exactly according to plan. <laughs> but I did say in that first episode that this would be a really good kind of chance for me to show you the good and the bad about this process and just take you on that journey. And today we'll have a look at how it looks at the moment and the next steps that we're going to be taking as well to hopefully continue to improve the biodiversity of this grassland sward. I really hope you enjoy. So what went wrong? Well, the plan was to get those yellow rattle plug plants established and then kind of thriving, you know, flowering, setting out loads more flowers with the end goal that we would end up with lots of nice fresh seed in this area. Long story short, that just did not happen. I think the plug plants were kind of overdeveloped, you know, they were really root bound and they went out too late. I think they need to go in at the start of May, not the end of May, because June is when they do their flowering and then July is when they really kind of finish and set seed. And that kind of root bound development in combination with the drought just stopped the plants dead. None of them really set out any more flowers than were originally on those kind of plug plants. So we've got some seed on the ground here. You know, I did see a few little, a few little pods that have developed, but the goal has not really been accomplished. You know, if we left this now, I think we might be lucky to get one or two yellow rattle plants come up next year. Looking at the ground, I mean, this is by no means the end of the world. There's still lots we can do, but looking at the ground, you can see, interestingly, there is, I think, evidence of kind of nutrient reduction. The grass growth here is much less strong, much less vigorous than it has been elsewhere, for example, on my allotment grass paths. And there are kind of little areas, little bits of bare soil, which I think is quite a good sign. But we are going to need to give this yellow rattle and this kind of wildflower establishment a little bit of a helping hand, I think. And to do that today, I'm going to be sowing lots of yellow rattle seed. Now, I was really lucky. We got these on sale, the end of summer sale at Wilco. So instead of kind of 250, £3.50 a pack, these were down to about 25p, which is absolutely fantastic because yellow rattle is an expensive seed. And I'm not sure exactly how much area this is meant to cover. The packets don't actually say. Um, so I've got four packets here, which is, I think, a very heavy sowing for how much. <laughs> how much area we've got here. So fingers crossed, this means we're gonna have a bulletproof germination, but we'll see, won't we? <laughs> it almost never goes to plan. So the first thing to do before I sow these, this is the right time of year, September, October, late August can be okay as well. But before we sow these, the first thing to do is get this mown really tightly to the floor. I'm gonna set the mower as low as it possibly can go. And depending on how much kind of bare earth is on show, we'll have a look at that. Um, we might need to get the rake out and give it a bit of a scarification to give these a chance to really germinate. So after giving this a real good scalping with the mower, you can see there's some bits of bare earth, but there is quite a lot of kind of this dense kind of dead grass thatch um, underneath. So instead of getting the rake out and doing it properly, what I'm gonna do is <laughs> scarify this a little bit the easy way. <laughs> Not actually sure if that is the easy way <laughs> but it's not the end of the world if you don't do that but i think it will just hopefully help a little bit you can see some of this grass and then i'm not going to go through with any real rhyme or reason i'm just going to scatter the seed let it fall where it falls because i've got enough of it i was wondering should i do it in like a pattern so i can see whether or not it's germinating properly but i think i'm just going to go for it and we'll see what happens come kind of March time. One interesting thing, 150 seeds per packet doesn't go as far as you might have thought. <laughs> Quite big seeds, but um, yeah, I'm glad I've got a lot of packets. So because there's so few seeds, I'm actually being a little more deliberate, just scattering a few in the bare patches that I've kind of kicked over. And one thing I will reiterate that I mentioned in the first episode is just that the timing of this is very important. These seeds do need to be on the ground over winter. They require that kind of cold stratification to actually get the signal that they need to germinate come spring. If you're watching this kind of early spring, and you like the idea of getting some wildflowers going, have a look at plug plants and hopefully you'll have a bit more success than I did. Or just start preparing, start doing your research so that come September, 
you can do what I'm doing now and hopefully it gets a nice germination of seeds that you sow. Another good thing to do when you're sowing yellow rattle is make sure the ground is nice and moist. We've had loads of rain recently, so I don't need to go around and water this in or prepare the ground any more than I already have done in theory anyway. We'll see how this goes out. I'll see you again in March when we'll have a look and see if any of these seeds are germinating. Thank you ever so much for watching. I really hope you found this informative, useful or just interesting. Hopefully I'll see you again next time.